Hi, welcome to Hindustan video lecture series. I am Dr. Badri Narayanan. I am going to speak to you about a very interesting topic, entrepreneurship. Today, the whole of India is buzzing with the word entrepreneurship. We are a startup India country. Yeah, lots of people in this country are required to work on different enterprises to make this country progress. So, is it for everybody? Can everybody become an entrepreneur or how does it go about? Is every person fit to do every kind of an enterprise? What is my right kind of enterprise? Am I fit for a job? Am I cut out to be an entrepreneur? Lots of questions in young minds. The whole country wants you to become entrepreneurs. And ultimately, I would say every one of us end up to become an entrepreneur. But how do we choose? When do we do it? What kind of enterprise should we pursue? These are some questions which are very basic which you need to understand. In this session, I am going to take you through two parts. One is, am I fit to take a job or is job the thing fit for me or is running an enterprise going to be fit for me? I will give you some very simple practical tips. Ask yourself five basic questions. First question is, what are you comfortable with? I like to get up in the morning. My office cab should come, pick me up, go there, 9 to 6 schedule, come back home, have a nice evening, then weekends, casual leaves, paychecks. Is this kind of a structure which you would like to have? Then probably you must choose a job. I am okay with half hazard schedules. I am ready to work in different timings. I am bothered only about uh, being successful and an achievement oriented person. I am not going to be a 9 to 5 person, I am flexible, I am okay with it. I want to chase my dream. Then entrepreneurship is for you. Point number one. Point number two, I want to be a specialist in a particular task. I want to focus on this. I want to only be known as an expert in this area. People should refer to me as an expert in this area. If that is going to be a kind of a profile you are looking for, then you must look for a specialist job. I am okay with being a generalist managing a different set of activities. I am good at multitasking. I can smile at people. I can take tough decisions. I can manage my finance. I can be sweet to my customer. I can be a generous boss. When you can do all these kinds of roles, then probably you should give a try to entrepreneurship. This is a difference between focus and multitasking. The second point. The third one is, I want a bundle of resources to be available for me. When I ask for budget, money should be available. When I ask for a printer, it should be available. When I, ha when I should have a broadband internet connectivity, yes, it must be available. You want resources to be ready at your command then probably you should work for a corporation which already has the basic infrastructure. Whereas, as an entrepreneur, you may have to chase between the available resources to meet the limitless wants. Probably you may not have a proper cabin to sit, but you may have to provide a space for your employees to sit and work. Probably you may have to take a hired taxi to meet or to go for a meeting, but you may have to arrange a cab for pick and drop of your employees. You have to chase between limited resources and unlimited needs. You are okay with that kind of a business, then you should try entrepreneurship. Then your objective in life, is it going to be growth oriented or is it going to be survival oriented? Every day for an entrepreneur is a question of survival. Even you can be the biggest of business houses, it does not matter. You will have to be actually planning for your survival every day because the moment you start taking rest, your competitor is there to eat you away. So business is always about survival, but job is always about growth. If your aspirations are growth oriented, then you may have to choose a job. If your aspirations are okay with survival, you love challenges, you love, you love to challenge yourself every day for survival, then entrepreneurship is for you. The final question for yourself is, do you enjoy taking risks or you wait for rewards to come? 
if you enjoy taking risk, then entrepreneurship is probably your cup of tea because it is a bowl of challenges, it is a kind of a salad which is mixed up, mix it up with a lot of excitement. You will have to look at life as a full of surprises and challenges. If you are that kind of a person who looks for that kind of an enjoyment, then you should definitely pursue entrepreneurship. But you look for some appreciations, you look for monetary and non-monetary rewards, you want uh, to be recognized among the peer group and uh, you want to be a star among uh, people of your constellation, then probably you should give a try to the job. I am not trying here to judge that whether job is good or entrepreneurship is good. But you may have to ask these questions about yourself because the very basic thing is like you should be very happy with what you are doing. So, if you want to jump into being an entrepreneur, then you must be prepared for this set of things. That is, you will not have a structure, you will have to be flexible, then you will, uh, you will be forced to do multitasking, you must be good at it and uh, you must have to work with limited resources. You may have to fight for your survivor every day and you may have to be motivated by challenging risks. If these things are going to be of interest to you, then entrepreneurship is probably your cup of tea. There are a lot of online tools which are available. You can try out yourself, but they are not judgmental. Do not take it as a judgment pronounced on you. Everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur. You will have to realize it at one point of time. That is it. I just told you what it takes to be an entrepreneur. You have to just do a little bit of introspection because there is a lot of energy which bubbles in an individual to start an enterprise. But to survive in an enterprise, you need to learn all these things. All the science about entrepreneurship has been crystallized from the land to lab. Lot of experiences from entrepreneurs have been recorded as theories. One very interesting theory now which I am going to share with you is the typology and entrepreneurial fit. If I want to be a Bahubali, I cannot just sit in my armchair and rest every day and expect my body to build every day. And if I have to be a warrior, I will have to do all the physical practice which I need to do. All our role models are being shown from different, uh, different industries, different challenges which they have taken up. Some people actually have learnt it on their way, but these theories help us to learn these techniques a bit more easily. I am going to now introduce you to five different types of ventures. Let us go to the board so that I can make it easy for you. The first typology of venture is called as revolutionary venture. As the name indicates, it, has, it is something special. It is going to turn the world upside down because revolutions have changed this world upside down. So, if our venture is going to be a revolutionary venture, there are certain things which you need to do. Then I am going to take you to another venture which is slightly on the opposite side. They are called as propagatory ventures. As the name indicates, propagatory ventures are like you do something which is a kind of a commercial film which has got no revolutionizing idea, but still it will reach out to masses. Will you be able to reach out to masses? That is a propagatory venture. Okay. Then if I want to concentrate on a small group of special clients, then I will have to call myself as a niche venture. Niche is a French word which means a specialized segment of customers. So if you want to serve a special segment of customers, then you will have to be a niche venture. Then the fourth typology is speculative ventures. Speculative ventures are as the name indicates, where do you do speculation? Speculation is done in the stock markets where you are very impatient, the capital is very impatient, you invest and you want to seek high returns in a very short period of time. So the risk which you have to take is also very high. So speculative ventures are risky ventures but the returns are also going to be great. If you are very impatient about the money which you invest, then you must be a speculative investor. Then the last typology is hustle venture. Hustle venture is a kind of a post retirement kind of a venture. I won't say only post, uh, people take up these kinds of ventures after retirement. 
Hustle ventures are for specialized people who choose to work. I draw my lines and I say, okay, this is fine for me. So, I am going to tell you some more information about revolutionary ventures. Let us take some examples so that you will be able to appreciate these concepts much better. What is a Google? Google changed the way people live lives. Earlier, when I do not know the route to my new place, I used to stop nearby and ask people, how do I go from here? Now, whom do I ask? I ask the Google. Earlier, to book my tickets on the, on the trains, I go to the counter, stay there overnight to book my tickets because I should be the first person in the queue. When the counter opens, I will have to book my tickets in advance. But now, do I go there? No. Mobile apps have changed, they have all actually changed my life. So, do you have an idea which is going to turn this world upside down? Then you can call it as a revolutionary venture. Here again, I want to take the example of Google again. Either you want to win on a grand scale or lose on a grand scale, you can be a revolutionary venture. What happened to Google glasses? It was very much hyped. That is going to be of a great revolution in this whole society. You just wear those pair of glasses and that is going to reveal everything out to you in this world. You think something that is going to give you information on that. You are going to go crazy with Google glasses. That was what was told to us when the product was about to be launched. Lots of reasons, lots of research, lots of practical issues. It has yet to come into the market as a successful product, but it has been absorbing a lot of money as investment and research. So, if you want to be a revolutionary venture, you need to be ready to accept both failures and successes on a grand scale and also you should keep investing a lot of capital investment money. Definitely when your product is successful, you will reap them, but you must have the patience to survive. Probably a good idea to go for a revolutionary venture is to go with a funding support. You have to get some R&D funding for doing it. Okay? Then, to go for propagatory ventures, the second one which is on the board here. What is so great about Big Bazaar? They sell the same groceries. What is the great thing about Big Basket? They sell the same groceries, fruits and vegetables. What is so big about Hindustan Unilever Limited? Are they selling some extraterrestrial things to us? No, the same toothpaste and the toothbrush the same shampoos and the soaps, but what is the reason behind its success? It is the largest distribution network. They can reach out to the last mile customer. What is the biggest success story of Coca Cola and Pepsi in this country and across the globe? Even where there is no bus routes available, Coca Cola and Pepsi are available. The power of propagatory ventures comes from its outreach to the market. Can you launch it big and go to the nook and corner of the market? then you can aspire to be a propagatory venture. Your strength comes from your distribution network and promotion. You keep on poisoning the mind of the customer saying that, see I am so great, come to me, I will excite you. So, propagatory venture is that kind of a venture. You need to invest in all these areas of distribution and promotion. You, you may not be having an exciting product, but you have to make the experience exciting. That is the characteristic of a propagatory venture. You must have the muscle might. Now, you must be able to figure out why many of the startups which are into some FMCG space are struggling to get into this uh, market because they do not have the might to get into the market. You need to be a propagatory venture for it. What it takes to be a niche venture? Are you a child specialist? You must know almost everything about what is what it takes to take care of a child from its birth till it becomes a teenager. You must have a critical understanding of a market. You want to be an expert in quilling. You want to be the known brand in quilling. You must know the tastes and preferences of the women who prefer quilled products. Can you sense what is going to be their next aspiration? Then you can serve this niche segment. Niche is a small group of customers about whom you should develop a great understanding a very deep understanding, probably things which they themselves do not know about them. So, you should take the help of the data analytics, big data today to dive in deep into their minds and know more facts about them. 
so that you will be able to enchant the, your customers with you. It is a kind of a very special relationship you build with these groups. Okay. What is the next venture? You are very impatient in investing, you want fast money, you do something today and you want millions of customers to subscribe for you. Like movies, the moment it is released, the moment the singles in the audio is released, you want millions of downloads to happen. So, if you, you can create that excitement and uh, make hay while the sun shines, then you can aspire for a speculative venture. But remember, if you want to be a speculator, you must do all the running around. You must be capable of running around a lot and you need to invest a lot of money in running around and reaching out to people. So, the final one, hustle venture. Probably, you are a person who is very contented. You say, okay, I have other priorities in life. Money is not my only priority. I will work for three hours in a day. I will, I will meet as many customers as possible. Probably, I am a lawyer. I am an auditor. I am a specialist doctor. I am a specialist expert in a subject. I deliver lectures. I am a, I am a great programming guy. I will work for these many hours in a day and I will make the money which I want. Probably most of the women in the audience, you will have to consider being a hustle entrepreneur. You need not give your career away. You can still plan your career, you need to decide your financial objectives and you need to work for particular hours in a day and you set margins for yourself. Okay, I want to make this much money, I will work for this many hours in a day, I will do an online job, I will create codes and I will earn this much money. So, if you are that kind of a venture, most of your music teachers, language specialists come under this category. People who have learnt music cannot keep quiet, they want to teach others, but they cannot do it as, a, they do not want to do it as a full time job. Most of them would prefer to do, do it as a part time activity. Hustle venture is that kind of a venture. You should have an extraordinary ability to execute. You just do it in an hour's time, but people should be really valuing your time that much of an expertise you should have. The, the doctors, the specialists whom we wait for, they just look at us and tell this is the problem you have. You meet hundreds of doctors before them, but you meet this guy who is a specialist who diagnoses you in 5 minutes time. So, hustle ventures, if you want to be successful, you have to be actually a great guy who can do things in a very short period of time. And you should have only modest growth ambitions. Now, if you have cap very carefully noticed, if you want to be a revolutionary venture and you want to work only 3 hours in a day, then that is going to be very difficult. You want to be a revolutionary venture, but you want to invest only very limited money, that is again going to be difficult. You want to be a speculative venture, but again you, you have a very small critical mass to look at. Then again that is going to be difficult. How are you going to make, are you going to really loot your customers, limited customers for the money which you are going to charge them? Are you going to offer that kind of a premium service? These are not definitely watertight compartments, definitely projects which begin in one particular mode keep travelling to other venture modes. But honestly the entrepreneur also grows along with the venture. A person who starts as a hustle may become propagatory and if the market is very receptive, he may differentiate to become a revolutionary. But again, we must understand each of these kinds of ventures needs a different entrepreneurial fit as well as a different kind of investment and return expectations. I hope you will understand in the two parts of this session what it takes to be an entrepreneur, whether a job is suitable for you, whether entrepreneurship is suitable for you. If you decide entrepreneurship is suitable for you, then you must probably look at which type of idea is really bothering you and which category it belongs to so that you get prepared. If it is going to be a rainy day, you set out to the road with an umbrella or a raincoat. If it is going to be a sunny day, again you get prepared accordingly. Same way, based on the type of venture you are going to start, you may have to prepare yourself accordingly. So, I hope in this session, I have given you a, some basic inputs about whether to choose a job or choose entrepreneurship, how to solve this dilemma.
some five basic questions I have given you. I have introduced to five different typologies of ventures. If you want to be a different kind of venture, what it takes to be that venture. There are a lot of interesting things about entrepreneurship. I am going to share this to you in the coming lectures. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.